What's good everybody? Pete with the blue shirt back for another tying tutorial and it's a good one. We've got the shaggy stone. I know. Who'd have thunk it? But it's an important one and you definitely need this in your fly box. So grab your tools, grab your vise. Let's have some fun. All right. In the vise today, this is a little bit different, but we're starting with a shank and this is a spawn bulk shank, 17 millimeter. And it might seem like a random number to start with, but as we progress through this fly, you're going to be thankful, at least I think you are, because I'm going to include another 17 millimeter, albeit for a different purpose. But let's get started on this stone fly. And if any of you saw me tie the wiggle leech or shaggy sculpin, that will be the inspiration, if you will, for this fly pattern, what we're tying today stonefly with a lot of that incorporated movement maybe not necessarily from the person fishing the fly but just from the fly itself and the ingredients involved so as you see got a little thread base started and since i never even opened that shank up or opened that arm it's going to tie down very well very easily for me and that's about all it takes now one thing to keep in mind i do want an even underbody on this. So I'm gonna add a little bit of extra wrap here in the front portion of the shank and we'll just get a few layers, few passes down and then we'll move on. All right, we've moved on. So first thing I wanna incorporate for a tail, and this is not like any of your regular stonefly tails, is a little shaggy dub, I know, shocker. Medium brown, and why? because it's gonna match with the rest of the fly, great. But again, we're talking about movement, especially for early sea runs and where you're at, maybe you're fishing some rainbows and browns, this is gonna get it done. So hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna treat this like any rubber leg. I'm just going to veil it over the thread and try to match it up, so to speak. And now that it's around my thread, I'm bringing it up and then I can just slide that down to the hook and make it work for me wherever I'm at. I'm not too concerned with getting this exactly even on both sides. I just want it coming off the back and this stuff will move and wiggle all by itself. There we go. We can trim up later too if we've got a couple that are really long versus some shorter fibers. But the idea being a lot of movement. That's what we got. Wiggle, wiggle. If it's not wiggling, you need to do something about that. Make it move. All right. So we're going to tie in a rib. This is going to be a pretty simple rear portion of this fly. And for the rib, I'm going back to some ultra wire in medium. And this is copper brown. And you could use gold, whatever color you, you're really into. By all means, incorporate that. Make yourself happy first. And keep in mind, the fish also have to eat it. So again, we're going to build up the front portion and this should really help in matching up some of that arm space as far as an evenish under body. Evenish. I think you could use that in your day to day. And let's get back to the front now. All right. So we are featuring a couple fully meal products today. And the first one is going to be some Euro Nymph Body Dub. And this is the color tan and nothing crazy, just a nice, uh, nice blend of some natural and maybe a little synthetic in there. Not a lot of flash or anything like that in this one. And it's going to look just fine. So I'm going to dub a noodle here and get that started. Looks like it got a little rabbit for sure. It's a nice feel to this dub, nice and soft, very malleable. What does that mean for you? It means if you wanted to go ultra thin on that thread as far as making your dubby noodle, this is going to allow you to do just that. And that really comes into play when you're tying the smaller flies, such as mayflies and different bugs like that with that super thin body. But for this stonefly, I'm not trying to keep it super thin. 
As you can see, we bulked up that underbody quite a bit. So all I want to do now is keep a consistent amount of dubbing um, on this noodle. And once I'm happy, I'm just going to start working my way back. And I'm not worried about exact touching wraps at this point. Just want to get this all the way. So that's going to be the last wrap back. But let me, let me put a little bit more dubbing on here. And I'm going to go thinner on the remainder of this just because all we have to do is get back to the front. We're going to have pretty decent coverage already. This will smash down with our next wrap layer. But this is the important part. Before I get all the way back the rib here, I'm going to take a wrap behind the rib and then move my rib back and continue. So I'll show you what this does. Hopefully you guys can see. Uh, I'll tilt it down as much as possible. What it does is give me one wrap behind that wire so that as I start there's no slippage of the wire to move back. It's not going to infringe upon my tails. If I were tying in the classic bias, I would have that protection where it's not going to crimp or pull one over to the side too much. So that's why I like that move. And I'm going to add just a little bit more of this tan Euronymph body dub here and work our way all the way back to that eye of our shank. So as you can see, it's not the most perfect body as far as even. However, it is going to work just fine. And I'm not concerned with a counter wrap. We're going to just wrap this ribbing wire here and really seat it in because we have plenty of dubbing laid down. By all means, utilize that. Bury that wire a little bit, put some pressure on, and it'll hold up much better and for a many, many more fish. All right, a few wraps, and we're going to trim out our wire like so. All I'm going to do is bring in the trusty thumbnail and push that cut end down, and now we'll continue to wrap over and cover all that goodness up. And yes, I'm using a black thread. This is some Uni 6 aught. However, you could match that up a little better. Dark brown or camel even, whatever would make you happy. And there's one whip finish and our second. And I am using the Stanfo Steel Tech Bobbin today, as well as the Stanfo Transformer Vice. A little clip clip, nothing to it. Loon hard head clear coming in to seal all this goodness in. Don't need to bunch here, just need to cover. And we'll quickly be moving on, but if we weren't on camera, of course, we'd be giving this a little bit of extra time to dry. And I think that's the good fly app texting me to say, yup, winner, winner, fish are going to eat that for dinner. <laughs> Let me check. Oh, it is. <laughs> Shocker. Yep, that fault goes to the tire. Didn't turn their phone off. There we go. Consider it done. All right, so we're going to move on from this. But I've shown you this before. When I'm trying to connect uh, a shank to a hook, I'm going to use a little bit of a different system. And so that I remember where everything is, I'm just going to hook my whip finish tool into the eye and then I'll release this from my vise. Now if I leave it on there and I set it aside, based on which way I came, which was underneath into the eye, I know what the top and bottom of that shank is. Not too important for this fly because that, that rear section is tied in the round, so there's really no wrong way to apply it. And now I'm going to get this hook involved here. And so for today's hook, we've got the A-Rex FW555, and this is a size 10. And it might provide just a little bit of a challenge as far as fitting everything in here. However, the finished product is going to speak for itself, and you'll be glad you put the extra effort in. All right, wire to keep that bead in place. Got some .020. The idea being that I'm actually going to get this to slide into that cavity, and hold everything in place. Let's see if that's right. I only want about six wraps and I'll probably undo one of those, but we'll see. I'm gonna trim that front portion. I'm gonna leave the back for now. 
again, because we don't know just how much room I'm going to have left based on how much this bead is going to eat up. And you see there, it's going to block. It's not going to slip in. So I'm going to undo two wraps here, at least in theory. One, two, which gives me about three and a half, four working wraps of weighted wire. And again, that was non-lead or lead-free 0.020 wire. There we go. I like that better. Slide that in, keeping the bulk of that bead on the outside of the shank so that when it's in the water, it's going to keel hook point up, which is what we're going for. All right. Let's get our thread back here. And I'm going to start it right behind that weighted wire and trim out this tag end. And remember, tiny stoneflies it doesn't have to be boring. It can, it can be pretty entertaining, pretty fun. It's up to you to open that envelope of creativity. And here at Spawn, we are all about trying new techniques, implementing materials maybe the way they, they weren't first designed for, but that's the beauty of Time Flies. It's fun and it is yours, so make it yours. All right, so now back to our tail section. So I'm going to slip that whip finish tool off of there. Now if I put it on like this, you would obviously be upside down compared to what we tied it. And it's going to be difficult to just connect that. So here's what we've got. We've got a second 17 millimeter shank. Told you that would come into play. And all I've done is removed the eye. I've cut that off. So we have the back portion. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to slip that on. And now guess what? In order to tie this down, I have to flip this over. And what does that do? Brings us right side down to match the hook. And so right there, if I tie that in like so, this back portion is going to ride just slightly be behind where I normally like it. I like that to line up with where the hook bar would be. But for this application, it's going to be just fine. So really start working that on. I'm going to check and make sure I'm running down the exact midline of my shank and I don't want it to tilt and move on me so I'm going to get a couple passes in here just to solidify the placement and now we'll start working that arm down and one thing you can do before you start just give it a pinch with your fingers and as you can see it's trying to slide so I don't want that. There we go. And now I can Hopefully get this arm to come down. I'm just going to apply a little bit of top pressure with my finger here as we pull with the thread. And voila. Super glue definitely would help here, but we're going to be all right without it. On this Steel Tech bobbin from Stalinfo, you really do have the ultimate in control as far as your tension in the bobbin. And then the rest, like any other bobbin, is still up to the person who is handling the tool. There we go. Pretty easy so far. And at this point, we are ready to start tying our body on this fly. All right, so as you can see, now all we've done, we've got our, our rear portion connected. And the way that this hook is going to sit hook point up in the vise. We just adjusted the camera a little bit so you can keep track as we go. So for this front portion, one thing before you get too excited and just get really into it, keep in mind we're going to have one, two, three sections, three clear sections on this fly. And just to make things a little bit difficult and fun, we're going to have the equivalent of legs coming out a la Shaggy Dub. And we're also going to have wing cases tied in, which will be made of some turkey. All right. So for the dubbing on this front portion, we're going to end up with a brown stone here. So I'm going to switch over to another fulling mill dub. And this again is the Euro Nymph, but this is Euro Nymph flash dub in brown and that is brown uv so let's get our our thread all the way back here and so again three different portions on this equal portions if possible and we're going to have a little bit of dub 
some legs, and then a little bit of dub, and then our wing case. Typically, if I were using rubber legs or something like that, it's a little bit easier to go ahead and tie those in, dub behind, and then dub around and into the front. But with this um, shaggy dub that we're using, it's a little bit trickier. So I'm just going to split each third portion into half. I know we're getting into a lot of math here today tying a fly, but you'll be all right. All right, so let's get a little bump of dubbing here in the back. That's all we need, nothing crazy. And now I've got roughly four pieces of that shaggy dub in medium brown once again. All we're gonna do, veil it over the thread and then control with our off tying hand that little portion of rubber leg or vinyl, whatever you wanna call it, and get that on top. At this point, I'm gonna to try to keep it even and split 50-50, half on my side, half on your side, and then give one or two more thread wraps to just keep that where I want it in front of that first ball of dubbing. And it's not perfect, but again, we're just going for some movement here, a little extra wiggle, and there we're gonna have it coming off enough to the side anyway. That one doesn't wanna play at all, well, then he doesn't get to go to the party. Out he goes. So now let's get back to some dub. This is definitely a wash, rinse, repeat kind of scenario. So please bear with me. I will try to keep you entertained as we build this little stone fly. And the UV in this is, is pretty subtle, but it's definitely there, and it's definitely going to grab some attention. Let me zip that dubbing back up here. And now we're going back. Now you see how it really grabs those legs and forces them to the side. And that is 100% what we're looking for. So there's our first section. And now, as far as this turkey, if you, if you notice, it's not really moving around a lot. That's, there's a reason. It's because I've treated it with artist fixative. And you could do the same thing with an unscented um, hairspray or something along those lines and so this is the section that is the end of the fibers and this would be where it comes off of the quill and so somewhere in the middle of that I don't want it crazy long as I'm trying to tie this in and incorporate so I'm just going to go ahead and trim straight across for now and if you want to finish this I'm going to end it with a V so let's go ahead and put a V in here Nothing crazy, just a little bit of a, a highlighter, an accent, and automatically now I've got this little shape, if you will, and let's go ahead and tie that in, and I want this to go just past the body section that we put in, so like so. Let me look here real quickly, make sure that stays up toward the top anyway. It does kind of creep down to the side, and that's what a regular stonefly wing case looks like, so. We're going to call that good. Trim out that little tag section. We're ready for our second body body segment. So that's where we're going to be. Let's go ahead and get some dub going on this again. So you pretty much get the idea. That is the gist of the remainder of our next two body portions. Nothing crazy like I said. And at the end of this we could even get out a brush and release some of those trap fibers underneath if we feel the need to. All right, so I'm gonna just go back over that first section a little bit and call that good. Again, we need some legs in each section and here's the next little pinch of shaggy dub. Over the thread it goes, up on top. Oop, that one let go a little early. There is a penalty for premature evacuation and that is that you have to redo it. So let's get that up on top, one wrap, split the legs as best as possible. And if you want, go ahead and incorporate a, a little bit of a figure eight wrap there, just to catch, catching that little bit of vinyl. There we go. And once again, back to the dub. Let's 
going to be very, very buggy by the time we are done with this. And like so. You see my, my dubbing isn't very even, but if you notice, it's going to be very buggy when it's all said and done. And to, to my mind, that's more important than a, a very clean flies. If it's not going to be clean, it's got to be buggy. And this is definitely a buggy fly. So again, cut straight across, trim out a little V, and tie in. As far as how far back, I just need it to cover that dubbing bump, if you will. And so it's just going to end slightly back on top of our first wing case. Nothing crazy though. Like this, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like now. It looks like it's shredded. And of course, remember, when these wing cases are opening, it's, it's not a very pretty ordeal. It's, it's brutal, and that bug has been trapped in there and can't wait to escape and, and get out and start swimming around or flying, whatever the case may be. Get that tied down, and we are on to the last section here. And I bet you can't guess. If you said dubbing, you're right. A little dubbing. The colors in this line are, are very nice. A lot of natural tones. So if you're into more natural looking bugs, by all means give this stuff a try. You will not be disappointed. So as you can see here, I'll show you on the bottom. I'm keeping in mind where my previous dubbing bump ended. So I get that second wrap there, which kind of covers over a little bit of our wing case, as well as matches up to give us that maintained even underbody. All right, one last section of shaggy dub here. And again, for each one of these sections of the body, I'm, I'm using roughly four to five pieces, but there's no right answer. You use what makes you happy. If you want extra movement, add a couple extra legs. Want less? Well, Go ahead and by all means pick out individual legs one at a time until you are happy. Tie those on like so. Bring these over to my side. Got a bonus little leg there that's got to come down. Doesn't even know it yet. There we go. Forgive my fingers here. I'll be out of the way in just a second. And there we are. I'm going to leave those legs like that. I don't mind that. And we'll finish up with a little bit more of this brown UV dubbing from Fulling Mill. And again, this is the Ural Nymph Flash Dub in UV Brown. So I'm going to get a wrap back and then come forward getting pretty close to the front there, right up against that bead, but that's okay. One last final section of our turkey. So we'll make that straight across cut, cut a little V notch, and we're ready to tie this last one in. And again, same deal, just covering up that body bump of dubbing, and that, of course, is going to lend itself to come out just a little bit over the previous wing case. There we go. Like so. Very carefully get in there and cut out that butt section. And let's see how we look on top real quick. That looks pretty stony to me. Go ahead and tie in or tie down that little section a little bit more. And let's finish this with just a kiss of that dubbing again. I really like the color of this. That flash is very subtle. That UV does show itself, and I guarantee you in the water, it'll be visible to the fish. All right. And there we go. Cover up those little pieces that we can't quite cut out, and that looks pretty buggy. Let's whip finish this guy. One, and a second one for good measure everybody's favorite thing in the world and just give that a little touch of head cement and again in case you weren't paying attention the first time this is loon hardhead in clear all right 
a little dabble, do you? And you're going to get to see the top portion now and the bottom portion of our fly. And you try not to get a bunch of head cement into the dubbing there, but if you get a little bit, it's not the end of the world. The dubbing isn't going to be the movement. Remember, we are looking for a fly that doesn't stop moving, even if we do. There we go. It's a little, little cosmetic work to do there, a couple pieces. But that is our finished fly. And I guess we'll call this the Shaggy Stone or Wiggle Stone, whichever one makes you happier. And again, these legs, they don't all have to be exact, but you can get in there and start cutting them if there are some really long and annoying pieces. By all means, get in there and customize this bad boy for yourself. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and we will see you guys on the water.